got a good one for you. Along with our regulars, Pete Matz and the orchestra, Harvey Corman, Vicki Lawrence, Tim Conway, our special guest, and I do mean special, he's one of my favorite performers in the whole wide world, Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> You came 3,000 3, miles to California? Why? <laughs> to see me? And her. And her. And if Vicky needs a mother in another pot, I'm ready. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. Yes. Besides the regulars on your show, what actor or actress do you think you had the most fun with on your show? The most fun that I have besides the regulars on our show? Well, Dick. Dick Van Dyke, uh, I loved working with Maggie Smith when she was a guest on our show and with Joanne Woodward. And um, specials would be Beverly Sills and Alan Alda. And then, of course, Julie. Yeah, I got a lot of favorites. Yes? Are you going to see Eunice tonight? Are you going to see Eunice tonight? No, we're not doing Eunice tonight. But we. Oh, well, now what the hell? We can't do her. <laughs> on people's nerves if you do it too many times. We are going to do Shirley Temple, though, for you, if you like that. Oh! Yes. My husband's too embarrassed to ask if we ever going to have Farrah Fawcett on your show. Would I ever have Farrah Fawcett? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, we got a big show for you, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Vicki Lawrence. And Tim Conway. these two, Sarge? No, that's all right. I can handle them by myself. You just give me five minutes along with them and I'll have them singing like canaries. <laughs> but we told you everything we know, copper. That right? Yeah, we're innocent. Innocent, huh? I'll tell you about innocent. <laughs> you know what I got over here in this pile right here? I got about 10,000 cases in here of crimes committed by people who said that they was innocent. But we didn't do nothing. Then you got nothing to worry about. I'll tell you something. No harm ever comes to anybody who's innocent. <laughs> All right. Now look, we ain't changing our story. That's right, we're sticking together like the captain and Tennille. <laughs> that right? What? Is that right? I'll tell you something, I'll see how you stick together when I get you two in separate rooms. How do you... <laughs> Trying to cross me up in this investigation, huh? Well, I'll tell you something, we got ways of checking that out, and I'll do that right now, if you don't mind. Because I happen to be in the service with somebody named Mamie. You! <laughs> gonna be rougher than I thought, but I'll tell you something, don't get your hopes up, Mamie. Williams! All right, all right, I'll go along with that. She's Mamie, you're Williams. All right, now. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about detective work. Start out by staying in the dark, and then the next thing you know, start investigating a little, 
Get a little glimmer of light here, a little glimmer there, and next thing you know, a light goes on. Once <laughs> that light goes on, then you know that you're on the, on the case, just for... <laughs> I'm going to get a few facts here from you. I want to know exactly where you were on Wednesday between 8 and 9 o'clock. And I want to know if you went somewhere to eat. I want to know what you ate. And I want to know who you ate it with. And if you were with somebody, then I want, <laughs> I want to know who you're with. Between the hours of 8 and 9 o'clock. That's easy. I was at Gil Holy's bar. Oh, yeah? Anybody see you? Yeah, sure. Mamie saw me and the bartender saw me. Everybody saw me. Yeah, right. We can check that out right now. <laughs> Hold on a minute. <laughs> All right. You... Get that light. Now, were you with Williams Wednesday between the hours of 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock? Well, yeah, but what difference does it make because the murder was at 3.30 in the afternoon? It was. They didn't tell me it happened until 8 o'clock. Huh, tough check on that. Okay, nice going. Now, where were you between the hours of 3 o'clock and 3.30 on Wednesday? Oh, uh, me and Mimi went to see a movie. Yeah, what'd you see? Uh, the shooters. Yeah, what's it about? Well, it's about this gunfighter who's real sick, you know, and he yeah. comes to this town, and the people there say... Wait, wait, hold it. Wait a minute, is that the one with John Wayne? Yeah. Well, don't tell me about it. I'm taking my wife to see that Saturday. <laughs> Check that out on you, though. Uh, you know that movie, The Omen? You went, you went to see Williams there on Wednesday at 3.30? How was that picture? We didn't see The Omen. We saw The Shooters with John Wayne. Boy, what a... But you are, don't tell me about that. Don't tell me about that. Sash, you're wasting your time here. Yeah, we got airtight alibis. Oh, really? Airtight alibis, huh? Well, I'll tell you something about airtight alibis. <laughs> guys actually could have escaped. I'll tell you about something about airtight alibis. They always got a crack. Once you start picking away at that crack... <laughs> Next thing you know, you find bigger trash. <laughs> Once you start making that hole a little bit bigger, the next thing you know, the whole alibi starts to crumble. And then when you finally get to it, the whole thing just kind of caves in. good example of it right there. <laughs> well, that doesn't prove anything because you still ain't found the crack in our story. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, where have you been? <laughs> yeah, they did. Right. Well, all the witnesses positively identified you two, so that's it. Hey, you guys knock me out, I'll tell you. You big shots, yes, sir, with all your big lawyers. Huh. I'll tell you something, I'm like this little pistol here. Kind of small, not too powerful. You guys are like these shotguns over here. Big and powerful, a lot of you. There's one thing you forgot, buddy. This little pistol is loaded. And these shotguns, just like you, are empty.
Love is sunshine yellow, cherry pink and moody blue. Love is just a crazy quilt of colors in the sky. And, and like, like a, a perfect, perfect rainbow, rainbow, love can fade away and die.
<laughs> Hi. I'm a, this is very difficult for me. I'm not, I'm not used to talking to people. I, I wouldn't have the courage to do this even now, but talking to yourself can get kind of boring. Don't you think so? As you can see, I'm not exactly a movie star type. <laughs> well, looks on everything. I think it's character that counts in a person. Certainly hope I have that. Of course, you know, whenever, whenever I meet people, girls, <laughs> I, I seem to bore them. that the girls you have met uh, didn't take the trouble to, to see you. I mean, they might have looked at you, but, but there's a big difference between looking at somebody and really seeing somebody. I mean, anybody with two eyes can look at somebody, but to really see somebody, that takes a lot of understanding. You're nice to talk to. Thank you. <laughs> I'm afraid that most of the, the boys I meet, they find me kind of boring. Oh. <laughs> You boring? That's impossible. I guess perhaps maybe neither one of us has ever uh, met the right person. Maybe, maybe not so far. My name's Pete. I'm Betsy. <laughs> do you, what do you want? Uh, <laughs> I've had, I've had some silly, silly daydreams in my life. Yeah. Yeah, you know, about growing up to be a famous adventurer and marrying the most glamorous woman in the world and everything, you know. I have had I think a sometimes silly a daydream shouldn't. all my life, too. It's a daydream that I have never told anyone except my Raggedy Ann doll. Mm. And to really tell you what my daydream is, I have to go back to my childhood to really... Mm. explain mm. it to you. You mm -hmm. see, when I was growing up, we were very poor. And I would never got a chance to read anything very much because we didn't have any books in our house to speak of. Oh, well, no, we did. We had, well, my mother had a couple of cookbooks, you know, but nothing, and there was, oh, no, my father had a big book of etchings. Mm. I remember one etching in particular of Stanley greeting Livingston, but I digress. Then one day, <laughs> my great aunt came over and she gave me my own little personal book of fairy tales. Well, oh. I tell you, that just opened up a whole new world for me. It was like walking into a dark room and turning on a light opening up a door into a world you know, of imagination. that is wonderful because I know exactly what you mean. You know, I can it remember was... the first time that I opened up Arabian, Arabian Nights. Arabian Nights, yes. yes. Uh, you know, I had to read it in I... secret down the street at Raymond's house oh. because my father didn't approve of me reading. Now, he wanted me out there on the sand lot playing softball like my athletic big brother. I'm you know? not finished. So any... <laughs> pardon, pardon. So any old who, to make a long story short, I read this fairy tale book, and from then on, one of my favorite daydreams in the whole wide world was, you won't laugh at this, will you? Because I've only told this to one person, my Raggedy Ann doll. You're in Raggedy doll. Ann doll, yes. All right, well, I dreamed, this was my daydream, you see, that someday I would grow up and I would be a princess, a beautiful princess. I know you're probably gonna laugh, you know, me thinking little plain old me that I would grow up yeah. to be a princess. 
No, anyway, so one day my dad called me <laughs> down in Raymond's house reading that darn Arabian night. I had to tell him that it was a school assignment because I don't ever figured out what he was doing over there anyway. In this daydream, I am this dad. princess, and along comes a handsome prince, and he just carries me away <laughs> all into the well, woods. That's, that's and exactly up what I was saying, like in my daydream. You know, I don't think castle. we should expect those fairy princesses and those godlike princes to come. I think a person should should probably compromise. Ordinary you know? people for, are yes. the backbone of this nation. What really counts, and I have always said so, is sincerity. <laughs> sincerity well, if sincere, counts. If there's one thing I am, it is sincere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if I, if I like a thing, say. Yes. If I like it, I'll say that I like it. And if I don't like a thing, I'll say that Let I don't like it, too. Let me tell you, I am you know? the same way. You know, for instance, I eat very day, often I... my breakfast at Al's Coffee Shop, oh. you know? And say I order eggs over easy. Now, suppose the waitress brings them, say, sunny side up. Now, I speak up. <laughs> I say, I don't like sunny side up, see? And I'm, I'm always that. Way. You know what it the trouble we, is you, with waitresses? You can't get their attention. They don't listen. They don't listen. They don't listen. That would never have happened if she had really listened. I mean, it takes more than two ears to really listen. To really listen takes a lot of understanding. You know, the waitress at Cecil's Cafe, now she listens. Because I've been eating there for five years now. And she, I've never known her to make that mistake of not listening. I eat at Cecil's, you know, it's a good, it's a good two blocks further than Al does. I say good two blocks because, well, actually it's about two and a half blocks. See, I live almost, not quite, but almost in the middle of the block. And I have to walk to the corner, cross the boulevard, which is a good wide street in itself. Then I have to walk two more blocks down third. And then Cecil's is on the corner of third and McGee. Whereas Al's is right on my corner, as I said. But you know, I think I like the brand of margarine they serve at Cecil's better. If it is margarine, I suppose it's margarine because I don't think they serve real butter in uh, coffee shops nowadays. Although I don't know. <laughs> Oh, is I it? I have an appointment oh, early tomorrow. Too. Well, it was very nice talking to you. It was very to nice you. talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and my daddy. Your poor mommy and daddy. Oh, no, don't think of it that way. I like to think of my mommy and daddy as off on a wonderful journey to a beautiful land where the birdies sing all day long and the sun is always shining. Where did they go, honey bunny? <laughs> Come on, girls, let's get ready. For bed. No. <laughs> for our nightly production number. If you don't need us. You want me to lead you? Why? Because you're the only one with taps on your pajama feet. All right. <laughs> Hit it.
in the dopity doo. Just give those grumpy old grumps the old one too. Boop, Mr. Grumpy old Wumpy, yeah, Mr. Grumpy old Wumpy. Come to adopt Honey Bunny. Oh, boy, I'm on a roll. <laughs> Who do you mean to adopt? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Why, you're penniless. Maybe so, but when I get my show on Broadway, uh, Broadway I'll be rolling in dough. <laughs> Broadway? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> Why? You're nothing but a broken down, second rate vaudeville tap dance. <laughs> Come with me, child. Just a second, Meanie. Oh, that's not nice to call him that. Why not? That's his name, Meanie Vandergilt. <laughs> You're my Uncle Meanie. Yes. And I'm your Uncle Miney. <laughs> and my daddy was your brother. Mo. No. <laughs> Could you tell me about my mummy and my daddy? You see, I didn't know them very well. Well, little honey bunny. <laughs> that much I know. Well, come with me, child. Oh, gosh, I just don't know which one of you to choose. Well, of course you do. Well, I'm one half a millionaire. I can give you everything. Uncle Miney has nothing. <laughs> Uncle Miney. Gee, I'm so sorry you didn't get to adopt me. <laughs> it would have been so much fun to have a daddy who could tap dance. Well, I, I, I know. Could you do a little step for me before I leave with Uncle Meanie? Oh, oh honey please. Buddy. Well, okay. Gosh, I oh. hope you can sing. <laughs>
listen to Uncle Mike now. It's not as bad as all that. Nothing is that bad. I want to tell you something. Gather around. <laughs> When our world comes tumbling down, we don't fret or fuss. Not grown up, grown ups like us, like us. Only little kids cry. Only little kids pout. Only little kids let a little upset lead to sulking about. It's been a, for you and for me, it's been a gruesome, hideous, horrible day. <laughs> but what good would it do to sniffle and stew and throw our dollies away? <laughs> we don't bounce on our beds. We don't plug up our ears. We don't wheeze, we don't bawl, we don't sniffle and squall, we don't burst into tears. <laughs> <laughs> Only little kids cry and rip off an eye from their favorite teddy bear. <laughs> we don't kick, we don't cuss, we don't bite, we don't fuss. <laughs> Not grown up, grown up, like us. <laughs> I'll tell you something, sweetheart. I'm still sore about Meanie adopting Honey Bunny. Oh, easy, baby. I'll tell you what, let's rehearse the number for the show. Okay. Huh? Come on, sit at the piano. All right. Okay? Hit it. <laughs> Thanks, I feel better already. I meant the number. Oh! <laughs> okay. One look at you, and what do I do? I tap dance. I can't reveal the way that I feel unless I tap dance. I want to tell you you're so sweet, my sweet. But I can only tell you with my I'd like to shout, but nothing comes out. So I tap dance. And in the night, I'm holding you tight. I tap dance. I try, I try to, to tell, tell you, heaven knows. I guess my tongue is in my toe. <laughs> and so I tap dance. I gotta tap dance. Cause when I tap dance, each tap is saying, If we can just come up with the finale, we'll make the big time for sure. Doggone it, I can't concentrate. Oh, you still thinking of Honey Bunny? Well, it's been three months now, Trixie. Gosh, you should have seen her when she left. She was so cute, a little imp. She said she was going to hold her breath until Meanie was nice to her. <laughs> come in. I don't know. 
Oh, honey bunny. Oh, please. I'll be so happy here living with such nice, warm, wonderful people. <laughs> well, what do you think, Trixie? Oh, sure. Why not, Miney? She's such an adorable tyke. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, gosh. It's going to be so wonderful living here with my Uncle Miney and my Aunt Trixie. <laughs> such a pretty lady. Oh, we're not married. <laughs> Such a naughty lady. Uh, honey bunny, you know something? It's past your bedtime. Why don't you go over there in the corner and go sleepy spy? Oh, Nighty-night. Nighty-night, honey. <laughs> Cute. Well, honey, our luck's gonna change now. You'll see. You really think so, sweetheart. I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, you want something, honey bunny? Yes, Uncle Miney. I never go to sleep unless I say my prayers. Won't you join me? Well, uh, just a minute, honey oh, bunny. Uncle Miney, I'm just getting so sleepy. I can hardly keep my little eyes open. Well? It should happen to your mouth. <laughs> Please, Uncle Miney. Okay, uh, Uncle Miney will say your prayers. Well, good. Now, you put your hands this way. Uh -huh. Hi there. It's me again. <laughs> Please bless everybody in the orphanage and my Uncle Miney and my Aunt Trixie, his very good friend, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and everybody in the whole wide world, regardless of race, color, or creed. Well, honey bunny, that's lovely. Oh, oh I forgot Uncle Meany. Oh. Please, let Uncle Meany get hit by a truck and splash <laughs> all over the place. Oh, honey. honey, bunny, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're right. I forgot to say amen. Oh. <laughs> Good night, Good night, Good night. <laughs> Cute little imp. <laughs> Never mind her, honey. How about us? Yeah. Could I have a drink of water? <laughs> Is she cute? Could you just eat her up? Yeah, I'd start on her neck. <laughs> the naughty lady's a funny lady. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, Uncle Miney's got an idea. Since you can't go to sleep, why don't you take this crayon and paper and go over there and draw? Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Trixie, I think I've got it. What? I think I've got the finale for our show. Yeah? You know what they've never done? They've never done Swanee River as a rumba. What do you think? It's perfect. It's marvelous. Now all we got to do is get ourselves a backer, and we can get married. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want something, honey bunny? Yes, Uncle Miney. I was just doodling here with my crayon, and I came up with a terrific idea for a production number. Would Isn't you like that <laughs> adorable? Let's see. Well, here's the music and the orchestration and the light cues. Here we are. Why don't we look at it and see how it works out? Okay. Let's just have a look here. Okay. Uh-huh. I see it's for three people. Uh-huh. Fella and a gal. <laughs> now, honey bunny, where are we going to find an adorable, tremendously talented eight-year-old girl? <laughs> say, you don't mean. Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, Aunt Trixie, this is your part up here. Why don't you sing that now? Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> no, Aunt Trixie, try to sing it like you mean it. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> well, if that's the best you can do, I guess we'll have to go with it. <laughs> All right, now you, Uncle Miney. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, you're Perfect! Oh, yeah! Okay, now both of you. Yum, 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 yum. Tummy, tum, tum. Peppermint sticks and bubble gum. Yum, yum, yum. Tummy, tum, tum. You're my lollipop and my lolly mum. Yum, yum, yum. You're both so sweet, I could eat you up. Yum, yum, yum. You're like the cream in my custard cup. Yum, yum, yum. You're better than gumdrops and cracker jacks. I could eat you for breakfast, eat you for lunch, and in between the snacks. Yum, yum, yum. You're like the best kind of chocolate drop. Yum, yum, yum. You got fruits and furs with nuts on top. <laughs> Your candy kisses and angel food cake. Yum. Pink hamburgers and hot fudge steak. Yum. Maple 
sugar and butterscotch goop. Yum. All day suckers and Tootsie Roll soup. I'd love to cover you up with lots of goo. I gobble you up and then you know what I do. I flew up all over you. Yum, yum, yum. That is great. <laughs> You know, if a producer ever saw that, we'd be on Broadway in no time. Come in. I just saw you do your show through the window, and I'm ready to back your show. You're a Broadway producer. I certainly am now. Here is a blank check. You just fill in any amount you need. I mean, with this kid. We're going to have the best show on Broadway. Oh, isn't that wonderful, <laughs> Uncle Mike? Gee, it sure is. Oh. Hey, Trixie, just think. You and I can get married, we can have a little house in the country, and we can adopt a honey bun here. Oh, it's going to be a wonderful life. <laughs> Isn't she adorable? <laughs> She's little Miss Showbiz, and isn't she great? Our little Miss Showbiz is so up to date. Ah, oh, who could resist her? I go and hey, hey. Oh, little Miss Showbiz. Is taking us to old Broadway. <laughs> you know something? Nothing can stop us now. Oh, I know. Except him. That's the child officer. She belongs to me. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't know what you're doing. No, wait a minute. You don't understand. He'll be miserable. He'll make her miserable. Oh, She's no. just a little teeny girl with a great big heart. And very long. Well, we've heard all the witnesses, and I think Uncle Meany's case is by far the stronger. And unless there's a surprise witness, I hereby award the prize. <laughs>
this cutie who can drive an audience wild? Who is this irresistible, dimpled, darling child? Who? 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 She's a midget! <laughs> Little Miss Showbiz, and isn't she great? Our little Miss Showbiz is so up to date. Ah, oh, who could resist her? Ra da di da day. She's Little Miss Showbiz, trucking down old Broadway. Ra da di da, ra da di da, ra da di da day. Be sure and be with us next week. I'm so glad we had this time together <laughs> just to have a laugh or sing a song. It seems we just got started, and before you know it, comes the time we have to say so long. Good night. <laughs> Additional material by Larry Siegel and Stan Hart. The preceding program was recorded before a live audience. This is your announcer speaking. Thank you.